family and friends of the Seaview Tabernacle. Welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Falls. Today he continues the theme, Christ is our life. The topic for today's discussion in Bible study is continuation from last week when we looked at the commander, commander in, of our life. Today we are going to look at the respons our responsibility under. under our commander mm -hmm. in chief. Turn with me now in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1 verses 25 30. Pastor, will you read for us? And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundance in Jesus Christ for me by my coming unto you. Verse 27, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your fears that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the fate of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which he saw in me, and now here to be in me, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, we are called to stand fast. We are called to suffer for him. Let us, as we study the word of God, let us do it in, you know, let us do it unto him in Jesus' name. And so, before I turn over to Pastor, let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your word this afternoon. We ask that you help us, Lord, to, as we give out your word, to be sound and we reflect on your word and what it means as we think of our responsibility under your command. And so, Lord, as we lay ourselves before you now, guide our thoughts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. As a, before I turn over to Pastor, I'm going to encourage you to like, share, and to um, like, subscribe. and subscribe. Pastor, over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes, as we continue, Commander-in-Chief, but particularly our responsibility under our Commander-in-Chief. And Paul will be saying is to display the gospel in chapter 1 and verse uh, 27. He talks about we are supposed, as it were, to defend the gospel of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. So therefore, we are living in a world of easy believism. People believe in anything and anything everything and they believe that what they believe can take them home because they have a different idea about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ people do not want to hear the gospel anymore and therefore the gospel is not to please man first Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4 but as we were a law of God to put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God 
which trieth the hearts. So we are not here to please man. Secondly, the gospel is not to pressure man. Man must be willing mm -hmm. to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is a mighty work of God which is wrought instantly, immediately for the one who is willing to believe yes. in Christ. Yes. So you are not to bo we are not supposed to, to pressure a person. A person must be willing to receive. But not only to please, we are not to please man or to pressure man, but the gospel must be presented. It is to present to man so that he can understand what the gospel is. It's not to believe everything and anything, but it's to believe, Sister Forbes, the gospel. And if our commander-in-chief gives to us a subject what to preach, the gospel, and Paul would be saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto uh, salvation. But here we are told to strive together, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And the first thought I want us to look on today is the defense of the gospel. Mm. We are supposed to defend because. the gospel, particularly in verse 17. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the one, the defense of the gospel, striving for the faith of the gospel. And the word striving means to labor hard mm. or to struggle are to contend. It is a cause that we have to fight for, particularly in these days of easy believism. Jude said that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So as subject, the gospel is placed in our hands. The commander has given to us the gospel mm. surround himself and we are the christian army mm. we are the christian soldiers we are the church yes and the church is supposed to present the gospel striving side by side for the defense of the gospel according to the revelation that was given to him so listen what Paul said in uh, uh, chapter 1 and, and verse 16. The one preached Christ of contention, mm -hmm. not discerning, supporting to have affliction to my bonds. So the one preach of contention. And this is what is taking place today in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of contention in the church. Mm -hmm. And this is adding to our bonds as we go out there and preach the gospel. But in verse 17 said, But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense okay. of the gospel, mm -hmm. and my brothers and my sisters, as you are in the army of Christ, you are there as a soldier to defend the gospel and there is no easy way out mm -hmm. the gospel is just the gospel yes, and right. we must pre pre uh, defend the gospel as I said Jude contend the describes the battle that the army must fight under and therefore we are fighting under our great commander in chief we must fight in the defense of the faith contend for the faith for the old counsel of god you cannot put in 
nor are you supposed to take out of the counsel of God. It means where it, where it is struggle to suffer under great stress as we get the gospel out. So therefore, as subjects in the army, we must defend God's word. Yes. My brother and my sister, you must defend the word of God. You must stand for what is right. You must stand for the truth. But secondly, we must distance ourselves from those who are false teachers. Mm -hmm. We cannot mix with them yes. to get what they are getting out. Because as I said, the gospel surrounds the debt and burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore we must come out from among them and yes, and be ye separated, the Lord. Mm -hmm. But secondly, as subject in the army, we must declare, thus said the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is the word of God. And this is the believer's responsibilities and privilege. Christian soldier, we must defend the gospel against people who are enemies of faith. Christian soldiers, the song said, the war is on. Mm -hmm. And we are living in the last days. And there are so many easy believers in. And therefore, if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot and you will not be saved. Once again, in chapter 3 and verse 18, For many of whom I have told you, and now tell you they are weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of mm. Christ. Mm. They are enemies mm. because they believe that they were in and they twist the gospel and now they become enemy. And verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who what? Mine earthly things. So my admonition, my encouragement to us under our great commander, we are supposed to display the gospel and to defend the gospel. And my last point is some distorting the gospel. What do I mean by that? They distort the gospel by mixing the gospel with false teaching. Mm. Brethren and friend, the gospel is the word of God. And the gospel is the pure word of God. And if the gospel is, is mixed, it is not the gospel. If you throw poison in milk, it is not milk anymore. The gospel cannot be mixed with man's idea. And secondly, the gospel is the, is the word of God and they distort the gospel not by mixing, but by misrepresenting the truth. It is to alter the true meaning and to twist out of shape mm. what the gospel really is. So they are mixing and they are misrepresenting and thirdly, they are misleading people through deception and confusion. Sad to say, some people are going to hell because they are deceived. Mm. They are deceived by man-made religion. They are not following the truth, the word of God. And many are going to quiet in hell. I never know. But my brothers and sisters, it is too late and it will be too late then. But fourthly, they uh, distort the gospel by marring the minds of, uh, and hearts. It means to bring blemish to spoil. And Paul warns us in chapter 
uh, three and verse two, he said, beware of dogs, mm. beware of evil workers, beware of concision, be on the lookout for those who are distorting the gospel. Brethren, be careful of the ism that is going on today in the world. Be aware of dogs, not the pets that we have in our home. Because dogs can be nuisance, they can be menace, they can be troublemakers, and they can be intimidate. And false teachers are plagued. Oh God, they are against the word of God. And they themselves are plagued false teachers and they will try to intimidate you and they are menace in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ but look at it evil workers they sow the seed of doubt mm. they sow the seed of uncertainty giving the impression that there are many ways to go to heaven but Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So, brethren, you are called to defend biblical truth. Mm -hmm. But secondly, evil workers sap the confidence of God's people. Mm -hmm. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, For the rich cause, I just suffer these things. Paul said, Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And therefore, do not allow evil workers to sap your spiritual energy. There was a time when you were bright in the Lord and fire for the Lord, but because of evil workers, they become dull. And still, yes, not only they sow seed of doubt, not only brethren, they sap the confidence of God's people, but thirdly, evil workers stint growth and development in believers. Mm -hmm. They prevent you from reading and studying the word of God, and they stop your growth. Example, like infant. Still and milk, then you should be full grown. Mm. But Peter said, Yeah, newborn babes mm. need the milk of the word. But there must be a time when you should leave milk, and therefore, because you are their stun, you become spiritual dwarf. Mm. But uh, not only as an infant, but a, a, a subject. Are a student still on the alphabetic when he or she should be teachers? Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, not growing at all, not developing. You're not able to defend the faith. And thirdly, yes, you're not building still in the in the foundation stage. When the superstructure out should be building up and growing. But I'm saying be careful of evil workers. They will prevent you from moving on in the Lord. So our commander in chief has given us the word and we are the subject under him. And we are supposed to defend the gospel and don't allow those to distort the word of God and to bring shame upon you. May God bless you. May God allow us to understand who we are and what we are called to do. Father, we ask now that you will bless your words to us and glorify yourself in us. Help us to know who we are. Help us to follow our commander in chief. We are your subject. We are the church. Mm. And the commission is given to us to get 
the gospel out. Help us to do so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.